Hello, my name's Amy and I'm Marketing Assistant at Leeds University Library Galleries. For this two minute treasure, we're going to take a trip through the fine city of Leeds. Before the Industrial Revolution, Leeds was relatively small, with a population of only 50,000 in the town and borough in 1797. The population exploded during the 19th century, doubling in size and reaching a population of 123,000 by 1831. The Industrial Revolution hit Leeds like a steam train. An area with an eye for business, it didn't take long for the local woollen merchants to supersize their operations. The introduction of powered machinery led to the creation of woollen and flax factories, led by pioneers such as John Marshall, painted here by John Russell. Instead of growing outwards, Leeds became denser, resulting in poor living conditions. This led to wealthier residents moving out of the city and into the leafier outskirts. In artworks such as this piece by Sophia Nicholson, Leeds is romantically depicted. Here we see the now demolished building Moot Hall. Located near to the cross section of Brigger and the Hedgerow, the composition belies the busy central location of the scene. Women can be seen wearing pristine long dresses, drifting along the pavements of the perfectly clean, cobbled streets. When Charles Dickens visited Leeds in 1866, he declared it one of the dirtiest places he'd ever seen, which is quite a feat given that he lived in London. Looking at John Atkinson Grimshaw's view of Brigger in the 1880s, it's quite hard to fathom Dickens' strongly negative opinion on the place. There's not a bit of dirt in sight. This plan of former slums at Camp Field in Leeds paints a rather different picture of the fast-growing city. Demolished in around 1900, this image gives insight into the cramped conditions as the buildings tussle with each other in the tight space. And so it would seem we'll have to make our minds up for ourselves. Is the historic city of Leeds that of Sophia Nicholson's romantically dreamy landscape? Or did Charles Dickens hit the nail on the head? I think I know which one I believe.